So, hello everyone, and welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. A few announcements before we get started. Uh, first and foremost, we found quite the number of people to re-up on our lacking of numbers for Beyond the Horizon. So, for all of you who actually responded, thank you. Um, second of all, uh, other quick announcements. Uh, exciting news uh, for you who are subscribers to the Twitch stream and the YouTube channel. Uh, there will be a link in the description uh, stating that you will be able to join our little Discord and be a part and just hang out, you know, sometimes talk to one of us, you know, be curious, ask us questions, you know, all that good stuff. You know, you'll be able to join our Discord, be, be a part of something. It's going to be amazing. I'm sorry. I said they have to be respectful and follow the yep. rules. There are rules and regulations that will be in place. Please do not ask us where we live. Do not say, Alexa, put this on my fucking tab or some shit like that. Because I do not have an Alexa. So jokes on you. Oh, so people still do that shit? Oh, yeah. Fuck them. Respectfully. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, not respectfully. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Um, uh... Other quick announcements. Uh, one of our subscribers uh, actually applied for this campaign and he will be a part of it. Uh, so um, ironically, he was introduced through um, Overlord, which is our original thing that we started streaming and posting. And um, the other two will be joining us with some very, very interesting characters i have a good feeling about these characters i have a feeling that even if they're not always able to join us on campaigns depending on like how life treats them i have a feeling they will be part of the storyline for a very very long time and uh let's see here other quick announcements um so uh if you are watching this on youtube sorry for the lack of like hours on in like sessions my apologies i have been going through a little bit of a stressful situation but i'm a little bit better so we'll be able to go for a little bit longer um so let's get this party started as we now announce it to the world as this uh discord channel is now called and hopefully we'll we'll be calling it from now on as we head into as we go and roll it again. R O L E. And uh, God. As someone yeah. just leaves. <laughs> Panda got called away. They're like yeah. Panda. Panda. Yep. Anyway. Yep. Um, she wished everybody good luck, so. Yeah. Ow. Oh. oh fuck. She had to leave already. Damn. Yep. Happens. Maybe she'll be able to back. Yeah. Who knows? Uh anyway. Uh, so, last time we left our heroes. Actually, uh, interestingly enough, Rio, like, as after we do the announcements, maybe we could do something like like a critical role. Like, we put the intro after the announcements, so that way people, like, can get right into, like, the update after the intro, you know? Fine. I'll edit it in. Sorry. <laughs> Her word. You don't have to do it immediately. I'm just saying something for the future. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, as we come back to the story after some hiatus, last time we left our group, you took a mission on the behest of a notorious pirate known as Captain Nathaniel Flint, uh, who requested you find the villages inside of the island that he's renting and take a gander on why shipments have been going missing. As you venture into the wilds of this place, you notice that the nature around you has become unbearably hot, almost to the level of being a desert. And you find that you are beset on by a slime, giant slime, who has been attacked before. You battle it, 
and with some difficulty, you manage to defeat it with quite the number of your party members going down in one turning tail and run. You eventually reach the local village, which you find out is home to lizard folk, um, stylized as large gator people. Uh, who have these, as you find out, slimes as pets and part of their nature as payback in order to compensate them for their lost giant slime, which they know you didn't intentionally try to attack it, but you had to defend yourself. They asked you to uh, take care of someone who has invaded their land and desecrated their dead. A necromancer with a mysterious object that he brought along with him from unknown parts. You made your way with uh, the ferryman to the central part of the, um, of the swamp, bypassing a native of the swamp, a very large, very dangerous venomous snake who makes the swamp his home. It's usually non-aggressive, but with the temperatures as it is, the ferryman, even the natives of this land, don't know how it behaves nowadays. So it's always a gamble for them to even live off the fish that they normally eat. As you make your way off the ferry and onto the other shoreline, you all trudge through the undergrowth and you realize you're being stalked by an ancient creature known as a Wendigo. You've only seen the hand of this creature scraping its long claws against tree bark. You have yet to see its face, but from what you've read in history books, these can be very dangerous creatures. As we come back onto the scene where the where from what I remember and what I have in my notes, Captain Charles Blake, you have drawn your sword and you're the only one to do so. Well, is that everybody get your weapon ready? And I don't have a sword, I have a hammer. I need you guys to role play, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Um. I remember last, it was right in front of us. <laughs> that was the last thing I remember. It was off to your side, actually. It was off to the side? Yeah, it was off to the side right, to the right still... side. Yep. We just passed some quick scene. And I have no knowledge of a Wendigo. That you do not. Is... I... This sounds stupid, but is there any good hiding spots? You're currently in a heavily overgrown swamp. There are plenty of good hiding spaces. Yeah, I'm going to disappear then. Give me a stealth roll. Uh, Down into the muck you go. 17. Pretty good. Pretty good. Wait, I have to roll it again on disadvantage. Yep. You have a level of exhaustion. Yeah. Oh, that's I, a seven. Everyone be careful. I, uh, I will. <laughs> no, no issue. Leave us be. We will go. We'll continue forward. As you are making your way forward, um, you notice, um, give, <coughs> give me a, give me a survival check. Okay. Give me a second. One. Okay. Time's up. Well, I'm just getting my character sheet open. Give me a second. That's all I meant. You know? All right. Is that a survival? All right. Yeah. Boop. 15. Let's see here. Um, as you are wandering forward uh through the swamps you are not very familiar with swamps at all and as you start like moving forward you move about maybe uh 50 feet ahead of you and you feel the cold in exactly in front of you as you feel the presence of the beast move in front of you and you just see its long claw scrape just gently above on the bark not to where it like makes a mark on the bark but enough to like emphasize stay away is it close to said temple that was supposed to shelter us no it seems um with your survival check charles could i get a nature check actually too all right okay not that great at this but here goes nothing yep um <laughs> yeah, six. unfortunately you you don't know what 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 is going on you do not know uh rio your character is currently hiding yes as you like take you like quickly like dive into the 
bowels of a dead tree that's been hollowed out. As you like back into it and try to hide your best, um, you notice that the cold air that is in front of Charles's bike, there's another set of cold air right behind you. As you look behind and you just see another pair of claws just reaching for you. Uh, dodge action. Roll out of the way. <laughs> You're currently in a trunk. I am getting out of here. <laughs> give, me a d uh, give me a dexterity check. Okay. Oh, Ooh, that was almost a natural 20. That I was know. so close to being a natural 20. Holy fuck. If you if you have like uh, 3D dice enabled, you'd be able to see it's like right uh, in between the 8 and the 20. It is so damn close. Oh, oh my hit god. The tape. Oh my god. That is that is disappointing. <laughs> Uh, you manage to struggle out of the thing. You're not uh, finessed enough to get out of it enough, but you do manage to get out. Not very, very smoothy, mind you, but enough to where you get out of there. Uh, boy. Now, uh, I need you, Rita, to make a nature check as well. Okay. Uh, on. Yeah, no. Nine. That's actually a lot better than his nature check, which does give you a little bit of information. Um, so you realize something, Miss Rita, uh, that your friend Charles does not. These are hunting tactics. They are leading you somewhere. I am not afraid. <sighs> Mind guys, I need you to act. There's reason why I go silent here. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Aye, you leave us be. You just be trying to go. They're not gonna listen. They want us to go, so mm. not in a good way. Then no. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Then looks like we may have a fight on our hands. Everyone be careful, stay close. What even works on these? You have no idea. No, I was asking Charles. Because I think he had some knowledge of him. I do actually do have some knowledge, but it's mostly what I heard from lore or, you know, folk tale. All, yeah, all he knows about the creatures is that they are notorious phantoms. They they can become solid and become ethereal at will. Uh, what does the others in the group seem to be feeling or thinking about? Oh, let me double check. Uh character um <laughs> um okay first off i'm gonna uh that was for harriet i meant to turn into her for a split second um harriet speaks up and uh sh she um mentions how um she once read about oh when to go hunting uh, basically, these creatures are notorious for leading prey into a specific location to the point of being cornered and then ambushing them. Was it far off? <laughs> Hit and run tactics, basically. And they're still so As far as you assume, yes. However, uh, I need to know where you guys are moving now. Well, for me... I'm just heading to the same direction I'm going. It's because I'm telling the beast I'm going the way I'm going. <laughs> or as my character sees it, you know. Okay. You start heading forward. Oh. Perception check. Have my bow and arrow ready out. If they get about 10, 15 feet away from me, I'm going to almost shoot them. 16. Okay. Dexterity saving throw with advantage. Okay. Advantage. Ew. 10. Um, uh... Uh, you see it, but you're not able to save yourself from falling into some quicksand. Ah, blast. Come on, ready. Really? Yep. Um. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, Harriet will use a strength check in order to try to pull you out. That's ah, not going to happen. Um. I would throw one end of my hemp rope to him, and then go around the tree and try to pull him out that way. Okay, give me a um, strength check with the advantage. <laughs> this is going to suck. Okay. Um, oh, good. Uh, 16. Okay, so dodge a quick sand. Uh, Charles, you are 
currently being pulled from the quicksand. As you um, get a, f- um, as you see uh, Rita trying to pull you from the quicksand, uh, you see this directly behind her. Okay. Well, this means combat's going to be started because I'm going to guiding bolt that bitch. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot to turn off the advantage. So actually, that would be the seven. My apologies. So I miss. Yep. As you like aim the spell, you let go with one hand in order to cast the spell. You see. It see you start casting the spell, and as you cast it, you see it go towards the beast, and its body becomes almost translucent as the spell just goes through it. As its upper arm just reaches towards Rita, grabs past her, grabs the rope, and yanks it. I need you to make a a dexterity saving throw. Go me? Yes. All right. Let me turn off advantage. That is advantage. Okay. You manage to land and skid yourself to a stop three centimeters before your nose meets with a trunk of a tree. What the heck? Uh, you say, what the heck? You turn around and you see this beast. Well, you seen me throw something right behind you, so. Well, I yep. know, but it happens within seconds. Yep. Um, Charles, how tall are you? Uh, let me look that up real quick. In bio. Exactly six foot. Oh, okay. Uh, the Wendigo is at least a few inches taller than you. A Wendigo doesn't say anything, but it points forward, says nothing, draws a line across its neck, raises its left hand, and points to the left. And he signs more like a bird flying away. Insight? Freedom, death. Insight. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I thought so. You (laughs) have no idea. (laughs) I think I have an idea. I have no idea what his intentions are. Got it. Insight? Yes. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And you have a plus five. What What the hell? I know, right? (laughs) I told you, clown. You you are very conv- you're like it's signing, and you're very confused. You you don't know sign language. Eh. The creature sighs very heavily and puts its one long claw into the mud and puts in common danger straight. No, safe, I got I got the left. whole sign language <laughs> bit. I was meaning the attention to. Have- does it mean to harm us, or does it seem like it's trying to fool us? It's try this Wendigo. You're not sure if you're uh, like the other but, Wendigo. It's like trying to help, but this Wendigo is trying to prevent you from falling into swamp dangers. Yeah, I, I figure my insight's not good enough to figure out if it's telling the truth or not. But yeah, you can at least tell it's trying. Not to get you killed. That's all you can tell. Maybe. <laughs> you so don't I have know for sure. Because I, have, in order for me to read it, I have to get kind of near it. Yeah. <laughs> and you hear me slowly read out what it says. Uh, uh. As soon as you look up, it's gone. In the other one? Uh, you can still feel its cold presence, but it has not appeared. I think we should get going. So do we trust the beastie or do we continue forward? Is that the right path that we were supposed to take? Uh, was it? I don't know. Uh, give me a survival check, both of you. Boy, oh, I hate having disadvantage. Yeah, no, what? I don't know. Oh, that's a natural one. You are very lucky that I no longer do this out of combat. <laughs> well, good thing I have a couple of rerolls for combat, so hush. <laughs> oh, good lord. Captain, you are able to tell the where the Wendigo that made the little message in the mud where he pointed is actually heading towards the temple where you need to go. You can actually see the steeple just barely out of like the trees where there's just the tiniest of gap. Aye, that is actually be the way that we need to go. Oh, go. All right, I guess I gotta lead the way, geez. All right, you head out. And after about 10 minutes of walking, it's about noon, and um, you hear the sounds of a battle going on right just out of sight, right ahead of you. Aye, there be battle. 
Do you wish to aid or Thank let them you. be? I think we should rename you to Captain Obvious. <laughs> I, I was going to say for either roads or eyes, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, do we interfere? She just or keeps do we walking leave? forward. All right, then last. All right, you head forward. And as you come to a little miniature clearing with what looks to be a swampish kind of version of meadow, you see an intense battle taking place. You see what looks to be a dwarf, a man dressed in red clothing, and a horned individual, and something on fire right next to them, battling what looks to be a horde of skeletons. Um, I'll start with um, the dwarf. Please describe your character for everyone watching. You want to start with Sam or should I? I think you should I start. Said the dwarf. Oh, sorry. I'm dealing with people. Uh, so the first thing you kind of notice about it is uh, he's not exactly clean and uh, not well kept, uh, but you can tell he's a stocky little fellow. Uh, Talklin's the name uh, for the Iron Fist clan. Well, so he says. Uh, one of the, notes, the things you notice is the giant battle axe that's well being swung around kind of willy nilly with no grace. Um, and he kind of screams a lot, at least what you can gather from what you see right now. That's all I'm going to give until we actually get into more role play. So. Okay. Uh, next is your character in the red. Yeah, so what you see is a, about a six foot tall figure. Uh, he's covered in this cloak uh, that covers most of his body. Uh, but in the heat of battle, you do see that underneath he's wearing just a regular set of leather armor uh, as he's holding up a shield in one hand. And in his other hand, it's a ball of flame. Uh, that he's consistently tossing out. Uh, and then standing close to him is this um, plant, or not plant, wood-like creature, uh, kind of like a miniature Groot, uh, but with a deer skull on, on his head uh, and with flaming fists and uh, fire coming out of his eyes. That's uh, taking up and interfering in the battle. Uh, next to to Sam. Next, what you see, see there is a very well dressed, well dressed tiefling, a uh, red skin, blue suit, uh, decor decor decorated horns, and uh, with deep red skin. Uh, he's kind, of, he's w w mostly just trying to stay as far away from uh, away from the actual fighting as as possible and shooting out, shooting it seems to be uh, shooting out fire every now and again. All right. Um. So as we go into that, oh, as we come from that, I'm going to. You guys to a new map location going to reveal this part of the map so that you can put uh, not all of you, but please uh, Rita and Captain Charles of the original group. Please put your characters on that part of the map. Um, uh, why is it not revealing? Just give him a moment. Why is it not revealing? Why is it not revealing? It's shy. No. Oh. <sighs> This is why I don't do dynamic lighting because it refuses to be being intelligent. Okay, that's not it. Why is it not? I'm I'm telling it to reveal itself and it's not doing. Are you anything. on the right layer? Yes, I am on the right layer. Yeah, sorry, I can't see shit right now. <laughs> Again, yeah, uh, um, I'm on. Uh, yeah, it, it, is it with dynamic lighting? If, yeah. If if it is so, you have to put the tokens down in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if it's like if you've got so the, the, so the, the little screen. so the little flame bits, right? Yes, yeah, so you have to put the the light sources and then the actual tokens for for the map to reveal themselves to those tokens. Oh, that's yeah, fucking stupid. But it's basically a case of you can only see what your token sees, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah. differentiate between DM and player. No, I'm pretty well, sure no, the, no, DM the DM can... DM should be able to see it fine. Yeah, but oh yeah, he, I he can. can't like reveal it to like. Oh, there you go. It's rising. You know, you put the targets down first, uh, set it to uh, can see, I think, if I remember correctly. You basically need to edit each token individually to, so that they can, uh, the player can view, view them through them. Each token. Oh. Yeah. I, why? <sighs> Hold on, let me just check my thing just to make sure I remember how it, how it goes. Okay. Um, give me a moment. Um, let's go to a very quick, quick break. break. Okay. Yeah. So I'm um, switching over and we're back. All right. So welcome back. Uh, we took a short break to figure some things out. Now people can actually see. Hurrah. We are no longer missing our, our eyeballs. Yep. Um, technical difficulties, always fun. Welcome to roll 20. Yep. <laughs> uh, so 
we have come back to say that now we have um, uh, since the players have decided to help these strangers, we are going straight into battle. So, Sam, since yes. you're first on the initiative list, what are you doing? So, I'm going to take my produce flame. I'm going to attack this guy right here. Okay. Sorry for the viewers. I only have dark vision up to this point. So, use your imagination. Speaking of which, time Mindbox. to do some battle music. Oof. I'm not gonna let no, no longer at max volume this time. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why I was playing music when you guys came in. Yeah, yeah me aware of that. I mean, the better then than now. <laughs> you yelling right yeah, now, big uh, So, so my little flame sputters out. I'm assuming that does not hit. <laughs> it does not. The uh, the skeleton actually sees it's coming, and it nimbly uh, just kind of like moves its shoulders to the side and you just hear an empty okay so uh i'm gonna stay in place and then i'm gonna use my bonus action to command my wildfire spirit good old sparky i say sparky go as he Spider? Moves, up, moves up next to me and then uh from from within the mouth of its deer skull it shoots out a little flame seed hope you guys can hear that it's also non-copyright so you don't have to worry about it um Rio. Well, I'll add it later. I'm just making sure. Is there a loop option for me? Yeah. No. You can add it oh, to Q, Q and then repeat. So yeah, so it's an 11 to hit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, it says. Okay. So trying to hit with an 11? Yes. That does not hit. Okay. So a little flame seat goes by and that's, uh, uh, that's going to be the end of my turn. Opolis's turn. This young half elf will sing a song of inspirational quotes since sh uh, she uh, has dark vision she will be able to see the others in front of her she moves forward and she will get all of your attention by singing some inspirational uh, songs and gives um, a song about mighty dwarvish fighters and gives it off to Tolkien Okay, so I get a d6. Got it. Yep. Got it, got it, got it. And that is it for her turn. I really no song for moi. <laughs> Halkin, your turn. Hi. Right. Um, so I see the one Sam uh, been shooting at, and it's kind of lighting up my vision. So I'm going to rush on over to be in front of that skeleton. And that's the move and time to swing. Ooh, that, that definitely is... hits. Cool. And now for the damage. Uh, uh, it's 11. 11? Yes, sir. Give me a moment. All right. Hey, you hit it square on on like the clavicle. It takes quite the hit, but it's still standing quite strong, but it has taken quite the quite the damage. Sturdier than you look. And that's how I'm going to end my turn. Ah, uh, Charles. All right. I saw some fire up ahead. So I'm going to head on over. I'm a drone. I'm about to smack a heretic. <clears throat> Someone say heresy. This is okay. Warning. This is not Warhammer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the Inquisition would like to know your position. <laughs> We're playing people. Well, it's undead. To me, that's heretic. That's a heretic right there. We're playing people! Uh, uh, ow. Charles, do your action. All right. Are you uh, dashing? What are you doing? I need to know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to dash up okay. into the light okay. so I can see. Oh. I know there's technically a light source somewhere around there. What are you a couple glowing people. Okay, you'll manage to get right here. All right. That's the end of your um, turn because you dashed. Yep. Uh, as he pulls up next to us really quickly, I just want to say hello there. All right, Miss Click. How dare you? <laughs> One job. All right. First, taking care of the mercs. One pulls, one runs by skirting your outskirts and going to the opposite end of you. 30. The other will also meet on your other side. They will both be attacking you, Tolkien. Bring it! The first one that pulled up to you first will have advantage. Does the 21 hit you? Yes, yes it does. All right, take eight bludgeoning damage. Please make a constitution saving throw. You make it, <laughs> you did not contract a disease. Not 20. The other skeleton mercenary will attempt to hit you as well. Does not have advantage. 
Does a 19 hit you? Yes, it does. Four bludgeoning damage to you, my friend. Got it. Another constitution saving throw. 12. You do contract a disease. Oh, mm. that, 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 what do you, uh, can I use? A specific disease or a random one? It is a selected disease, actually. Oh. Ha. Damn. This is known as Lockjaw. Oh. It's a randomized disease that I roll for, so it's not always good for me or good for him. We just say Lockjaw kind of makes sense with the Rusty Mace. Yep. Lockjaw uh, gives... uh, Whenever uh, Lockjaw is a disease that basically makes it difficult for people to be persuasive in certain situations. So whenever it comes to persuasions or deceptions, you will have disadvantage until you get this cured. Got it. It is Charles, uh, wait, you already nope. dashed. Uh, Rukar, you will actually copy his ally, Charles, and dash. Rita, your turn. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, Tolkien, how are you looking? <laughs> uh, I am bloodied. I am from, if you want hit points exactly, I'm from 21 to 9. I am yeah. bloodied, but I am perfectly in my element. And I move up 30, and then I'm going to do bonus action dash. With my bowing arrow out, I'm going to try hit this guy with my action. All right. And probably don't hit. Wait, it's a vantage because, no. You do have an ally next to him. Yep. It's a vantage. So there's 23. Well, consider me. Yes, definitely. It hits all day, every day. Oh, I forgot to do sleep. Okay, do that. And all right. sneak attack damage. Okay. Come on. What? Well, Ooh. that's still something. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Tolkien, after being ruthless, ruthlessly attacked by two skeleton mercenaries holding rusty mauls, you see one of them takes an arrow to the back and you just see the slightest hint of a female horned individual just sniping from the distance. Ah, I got the devil on my side. Not here. Who else had the urge to say I have God and anime on my side? As who else had that urge? Uh, I'm not gonna mention just anything. <laughs> I definitely had that urge. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so um, is okay. it the end of your turn? Yep, that's all I can do. Okay, Harriet Tubman. Uh, she will move over here, and she has a longbow. But can she see? Unfortunately, she cannot. So she'll have disadvantage. Here we go. Oof. Nine. It uh, finds itself in the trunk of a tree somewhere. Hey, okay. now I've moved him. Next are the skeletons. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 25, 30. How dare you do that for me? I'm insulted. Anyway, I was seeing what their pathing was. Anywho. Um, the first off skeleton will attack Rita, the one directly in front of you. 14, does it hit you? Oh, it meets my armor class. So it does. Okay. Hey. Or piercing damage. Um, please make a constitution saving throw. Saving. Uh, you have contracted a disease. That's funny. Uh, so this disease is, uh, the runs. Your butt. Yeah. Correction, your butt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, the difference between this one and the one he contracted, his was his his will not go away until cured. Yours might go away. Well, it all depends hunger. on what you eat. <laughs> yep, you will have to consume double rations. Oh no! So much fiber. Yep. Oh. Avoid fiber. Drink dairy. <laughs> yeah, how in the swamp? No. <laughs> um, all you have to do is milk those slugs. That's all you have to do. <laughs> uh, the skeleton will actually uh, um, attack the tiefling in the party. I don't think a seven hits you. Does a seven hit you, Mr. Silas? No, it's not. <laughs> all right. The skeleton's turns are done. Silas, you're up. <sighs> Yeah, I can look at look look around at all these skirts and go. Well, clearly, clearly who's a, who's a running insult version doesn't have much, ha, have much of an insight for tactics. As he's going to move here and cast burning hands on all on all of these guys. They are within a fifteen foot cone. Yep. Well, then I can see for a little bit. 
Just for a smidge. Uh, <laughs> I see. I can't see. Hmm? Flash bang. Uh, 15 damage. All they need to roll a deck saving throw. Deck saving throw. Got it. Uh, DC 13. That one takes half. That one also takes half. And that one also takes half. <laughs> and last one. Give me a second. Sorry, it's being an ass. Wow. All save. Oh, Damn. Okay. <laughs> they all saved on your ass. Holy shit. Well, they still will take um, eight damage. Yes, of course. They still yeah. took very heavy damage, but they are still standing and they are not pleased with you now. Sam right. Kyle. Okay. okay, okay. So, Would you fellows might, might, might mind uh, eliminate, el el finishing these fellows off and then helping out the dwarf? I, I think I will. I very much like your style as I turn around and I cast Burning Hands. Okay, so I'm going to hey, make sure more. <laughs> I've been traveling with pyromaniacs. Yeah, but pyromaniacs tend to be the best companion. I mean, Made too many. Fuck. <laughs> uh, save 13. Okay, so, so one, two, three, three fail. fail. Yep. Take seven. Uh, as you cast the burning hands right after one another, after the final burning hand, you see that nothing is left of this one, this one, and this one. Even their swords are gone but miraculously this one is still standing but barely he's on fire <laughs> uh and then i'm gonna use tough, tough that one yeah we we can take care of that one in a bit uh i'm gonna use my bonus action to command my wildfire spirit have him move up next to Talkin, and then i'm gonna use fiery teleportation if he so chooses to teleport with the wildfire spirit he can who me oh yeah we can have this position. Uh, is that a spell? Uh, it's one of his abilities. I'll put it up. So he, him and uh, each willing creature teleport up to 15 feet. So I'm just going to teleport 10 feet uh, or 15 feet down. And then the ones remaining within five feet of him uh, have to do a deck saving throw. And that would be five damage, fire damage. Does it have any component that relate to a spell? Not it's just the ability? Uh, it, yeah, so it's an ability of the Wildfire Spirit. Okay. It's one of its actions. Oh. Uh, uh, I'll be teleporting to right here. So. Oh, well, you, you kind of have to come along with oh. it. Oh, okay, so I have to go right here? Yes. That's fine. Uh, anywhere within five feet of him. That's fine. Gotcha. You can choose not to go with it, but... I'm I'm kind of in a bad position, even though I want to fight it out. I, my, I, I know better. <laughs> Yeah, and if he chooses not to go, he also has to make the, the save. Because he, he basically, the wildfire spirit explodes and disappears. Okay, so this guy takes five, five, and this one passes, so... Okay. Uh, so, so it's only the two that were next to him, so it would only be these. Two. There's three next to him. Uh, no, it's within five feet, so this one is too far away. Okay, so... Um, only the was there. Yep, got it. Apollos will move up. It's the same with suck ability, so one takes damage, one doesn't. Yes. Uh, that's how I roll it, yeah. Uh, she will sing a very inspiring tune uh, towards the man in red, giving you bardic inspiration. Understood. Saying something about a red wedding. <laughs> Oof. <okay. laughs> uh, talking. Uh, okay, so I am going to move, support the person who shot the arrow for me. Uh, and then I'm just going to, for my action, swing. So, okay, that eight does doesn't hit. not hit. <laughs> uh, and then for my bonus action, I'm going to use second wind. And I heal for uh, 10, plus oh. my fire level. Oh, okay. Okay, Charles. All right, my light source moved off, apparently. Hmm. Downside I mean, is I can't really see thing, so. You can try to hit, but be at disadvantage. You know what? I take the time, I get a torch out and light it. Okay, that will be considered an action. All right, that's fine. But you will be able to have 10 feet of vision now. Yep. Wait, Bloody torch only gives... Not to... As far as I'm aware, yeah, a torch. Normally a torch is 20 feet. Yeah, a torch is 20 feet. Let me double check that, though. Yeah, let me double check facts. Bright light, 20 foot, dim light for an additional 20. Okay. Yep. And if you hit someone with it, it deals fire damage. Okay, you should be able to see a little bit better now. Aye, that'd be better. Okay, Skeletal Mercenary. Uh, one of them sees that the dwarf is having difficult times, and the other sees a spellcaster. Uh, the Skeletal Mercenary will use its ability and pull out a for its 
action. It must use an action in order to blow a war horn and it proceeds to blow it. Which one? Uh, this one. Okay. My brain is confused on how that works, but... It is a magical war horn given to him by by the necromancer. I'm just like, wait. Okay. Just yeah, like, so he, he just ran up to me and then just blows a war horn in my face. I see how it is. Basically, yeah. This one will continue to attack you because you look damaged, my friend. I mean, I, I'm almost, I'm at 19 out of 26 now, so yeah, or 21, so I'm actually looking pretty good. Shh, so I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, my bad. Natural 20. <laughs> I'm taking that hit. Oh, see, I warned you. Nah. Nine plus eight, which is almost 17. max. Yep, 17. Give me a Constitution saving throw. Actually, you've already con uh, contracted a disease. You can't contract more than two, so you won't have to. No, I only have one disease contracted right now. So I yep. would have to. So, um, mm. you know, just to play it safe, I'm going to say I'm going to use the Bardic Inspiration for this this roll. Okay. Probably shouldn't have to, but no. Nope. You, uh, you already you said you're using, using it. I know, no, no. Uh, I said I probably shouldn't have, but I will anyway. Okay. The thing with Bardic Inspiration is you don't technically ha you don't have to use it until after you've rolled. Oh, I thought you had to when you call it. Said you, well, I, think, I thought you had to call it out. Yeah. I'm no. Yeah, you have, have to. Yeah, before you roll a d20, you have to roll before yeah, deciding. Yeah, he, he already said it, so he has to do it. I think I'm good. 24. Although, <laughs> you do pass. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Bardic Inspiration, you do have to roll. You have to say you're going to use it before you roll. Yep. Oh. Um. So, uh, Rukar is up. At least that's what I read. I could be wrong. Right. Yeah, no, you don't have to call it. It's, it says... Uh, roll you. the die at the double roll to, to one of those ejects. How so am I not roll. allowed to use that command? Fuck you. Okay, well, I use well, it anyway. I'll mix yeah. my, my, my F up. You just have to watch what up. you say sometimes. Yeah, no, that's that's perfectly fine. That's on no, me. No, 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 I'm, no. I'm, I'm talking about, like, meep. Oh, no. We, we know you're having troubles with your other characters. Fuck you, Discord. Fuck you, Discord. <laughs> but hey, at least you don't have two diseases. Yep. <laughs> we'll see that. I just know diseases in this game can get super bad. Yeah, it is going to be pretty bad later on. This is the easy stuff. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Rukar will cast Eldritch Blast against the skeleton. Dang. Yeah, that Pretty definitely hits. And the skeleton's dead. Rita, you're up. Okay, move here. Uh, be going out through short sword and... That being said, skeleton with the vintage is 13 hit. Which skeleton could you? Okay, that skeleton. Um, it does not. Yeah, I'm going to the use my reroll. skeleton is wielding a shield. It is advantage. Yeah, I'm using my reroll advantage in combat. Wait, wait, you you were supposed to have advantage. I did. Yeah. Oh, and what? then regular would have been because you have disadvantage because your exhaustion level would have been 15, so you would have hit. Okay, then it's 15. That was in. <laughs> Sorry, I rolled it for you. It's fine. Uh, nine points of damage. Wait, exhaustion won't do that for combat, will it? It says ability check. Yeah, exhaustion doesn't affect uh, first thing of the uh, combat. Yeah, but exhaustion well, doesn't expect uh, combat. Oh, okay. Well, regardless, it's a 15, so it does hit. Okay, uh... Sorry, I'm still new at Rogue, so... I you got a bonus action left. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to remember still, still if I did damage. attack on bonus action or... Uh, 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 level it, 2. Yeah, I don't think I can yet. No, I think only fighters uh, can right now. Do you have an offhand weapon to begin with? I have daggers. Uh, so you, yeah, if you're swinging with a short sword with one hand, you should be able to attack with a dagger in your offhand. Yeah. Okay. That'd be... Do you have the ability, though? Though. Yeah, there's, there's a bonus action that anyone can do. As long as it's a uh, light weapon. Yeah, as long as both weapons are light. Yeah. Yeah. You just so, don't add your your ability modifier to the second attack. Okay. So. To the damage specifically. And no stick attack on the second one. Nineteen. Nine, yeah, that'll hit. And so it is. Five. Five. No. That's pretty nice. No. Uh, it's as. Two. It's two. two because no, no two. Two. Yep. Yeah, no dex bonus. Two, so two, 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 two. okay, so calculating. Okay. Uh okay, this sorry. skeleton is still barely hanging on. It has a dislocated jaw, it's a Well, that ends my turn. Harriet will um use an action, put away her longbow, pull out her short 
sword go right beside him. That's her turn. Next up, you hear a crashing through the underbrush as the warhorn does take effect. Oh, gosh. As two, two minotaur skeletons come crashing through, roaring at the top of their lungs, which they don't have. So you wonder how they did it. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30. What vile sorcery this be? Yeah, Nick calling Manson. his friends. That's not nice. How yep. dare he be? How, how dare he call reinforcements? And of course, these these guys will actually be taking place at the bottom of the combat order. As you see, a few creatures spawn out of the rise up from the dead. A couple of your former compatriots, actually, uh, from your original party. Rise from your grave. Of course, these these three will be taking their turns at the bottom of the turn order after this turn. Silas, it is your turn. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Silas is gonna, going, going to cast uh, Magic Missile. Okay, against two. Uh, first one is against the skeleton. Okay. And then one against uh, hit him. Uh, yeah, uh, actually two against this guy. So okay. I'll just roll again. This is Magic Missile, so you click, click each time. Okay. Uh, three damage to the skeleton, th this skeleton, and eight damage to this guy. Okay. Uh, the so skeletal I'm mercenary that is facing you, um, Mr. Tolkien, is not having a pleasant day. However, he is still standing quite strong for a skeleton. Mm. These, uh, This is clearly a different breed. Yeah. However, uh, you do see evidence of heavy damage against the creature. Uh, great question, Dwarf. How good, how good, are you, how good are you are swinging a mall? Rather use the axe. Yes, and I'd rather you break their bones. Fair. <laughs> how about how, so, so? How about you try taking take, take, take and see if we can take down that 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 f f fellow and start swinging away? I I can do that. Wonderful. And that's his turn. Okay. Sam. Uh, actually, hmm. no. Actually, before he that, that he's going to use uh, some movement to go back here. One of the skeletons notices it, and you, and it like, points at you. Oh, you shut it, you, you? No, shut up. <laughs> Sam, your turn. Yes, okay, so, uh, seeing how the, the new friends are showing up, uh, I'm gonna cast Entangle, uh, to the three that are north of me. So it's a 20 foot square, right, so it's gonna be... Okay, one of them you won't be able to catch. I don't. Oh, okay. Those three got gotcha. you. Yep. Yes. Yeah, the top ones. Okay, let me double check something. Yeah, so it's basically these ghostly flames in the shape of vines pop up from from the ground and try to grasp onto them. Okay, I'm going to make strength saving throws for them. Yes. Okay, one of them does make that. Uh, you have one more. Yep, I know. I have to switch between... Yep, two of them make it. One is the skeleton mercenary, one is a regular skeleton. The other is, however, restrained by it. You said that uh, once worked during combat? Yep. Okay. Don't uh, worry, I'm rolling it. Oh, well, yeah, well the other, even if they fail, they're still slow to the point where I don't think they should make it to us. Oh. So, um, Rita, oh. would you like to tell everyone how my campaign works? All right, long before. <laughs> He used to, if we made um, roll ones, no matter what, we used to do a 1d100. And I believe the lower the number is, the better. The higher the number, the worse? No, the I higher the opposite. number. Yep. Either way, yes, thing. Yeah. we want higher numbers because it's better for us, bad for them. Wait, if so if the enemy rolls a high number, it's bad for them? Yes. No, no, it's, no. Good. <laughs> it's good for it's them, good bad for, for us. You. Oh, it's okay. better for you as the players. Uh -huh. If the enemies roll a high number, it is better for you. If okay. you guys roll a higher number, it's better for the enemies. Ah, It's always slightly confusing at first. I know. <laughs> However, you guys, uh, it rolled the natural 100. Which is super great for us. Fox Interesting. Ball. They all die. It's high up. How could it fail that badly? <sighs> He has There's a gone. great question. He has a book of events. <laughs> when I say a book, he has a book for every event possible. Okay, let's see here. Camera. Okay, swamp battle, skeleton, swampage. Page 427. Give me a sec. Yeah, he handwritten all this, so. Go back, someone's knocking on my door. All good. Well, you're good. Good thing I made them do the saves then. Yes. That's why we don't want to roll natural ones in combat. Any other time, it's fine, but in combat, 
play that thing. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> All right. So since we're at the top of the turn order and he had to go to the thing, yes, let's take the a door. quick 15 minute break. Everyone go to the bathroom, get snacks, stuff like that. Switching over. I'm going to press pause. We'll be back. Yep. Welcome back, everybody, from the break. Um, next up on the list of combatants, we have Opalis. Wait, no. Wait, Tell oh, us the oh, one oh, D-100. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, well, D-100. Oh, that that would be wonderful. I can't yet. Oh, you fuck. You don't. Oh. You fuck. <laughs> I got to wait until the end of the turn order for it to be applicable. Ah. Gotcha. Okay, so that was my action, right, to cast the Entangle spell. Uh, yep. I'm going to bonus action, uh, Fiery Teleport again, me and my spirit. Um, so, hold on, momento. Un momento, favor. Okay, so what I'm not seeing is it's not considered a disengage action. No, it's a teleport. It, it, it's a teleport. Uh, only I, if you're, like, using your movement to move. Like, teleports and stuff that don't do, get uh, opportunity attacks. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That is something I'll need to make a notification of. Okay, where are you teleporting to? Uh, I'm just teleporting right next door. Uh, and uh, uh, so he has to make a deck saving throw, this guy. Of course, got it. And it would be three fire damage, 14. which he passes. So he takes none. <laughs> okay, now Opalis' turn. Uh, she will cast a spell against the skeleton she sees here. Uh, she will cast a Vicious Mockery which I must make uh, the skeleton uh, wisdom save, which is not their best feature. How does she mock it? Yes. Hey, you big dummy. <laughs> Man, you got a little bone there. <laughs> oh. Man, I've oh. heard, I've heard, I've heard that you skeletons are supposed to be frightening. But seriously, look at you. You're all fat and gross. You're supposed to be skin and bone. <laughs> yeah. So the skeleton who was hanging on barely collapses in a heap after hearing it was called fat and is considered dead. <coughs> Talkin. Do this. I am going to swing at the skelly right next to me. Doki. And that would be with advantage. Yeah, does 23 hit? Yeah, it hits. And eight. Okay. Uh, um, as kill? you... Um, Sorry, it as matters. you, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just describing it. As you take forth your great axe, you take a mighty slice at it. It takes a few, like, uh, like just a step back, like starts to fall, but then it like reiterates itself. And as you see, the the magic in its eyes is flickering very faintly. It is on death's door. So it's still alive, huh? Barely. Well, what's action search? And swing again! 24 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Uh, 10 damage. Yeah, it's dead. <laughs> uh, uh, you lop off its head as it just looks at you with its flickering eyeballs and just... Um, and that will be my... to the ground. That will be my turn. As you see, its maul it falls to the ground. Um, just so you know, it's starting to sink into the bog which it is standing on. Yeah, I think you I... can use... I already used a bonus action, I already used an action. Yep. The only thing I have uh, does move, so I can't grab oh, it right now. Yep. Well, you, still have your ob- you still have your object interaction. But wouldn't I have to drop my axe, because my axe is a two-handed weapon? True. Well, you could use your object interaction to put it, put it away, so you pick up next turn. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll put away my axe for my object. That would be considered, to put away your axe and to pick up another, or that would be considered full action. Just no, no, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just putting away the axe. Yep. That's all okay. I'm doing, and then I'm ending my turn. Okay. Uh, Charles. Uh, let's... <laughs> Hmm. See some big figures off in the distance, but it's kind of, you know, shadowy still. Yeah. So I'm going to move up next to the dwarf. Dwarf. (laughs) D-O-R-F. Dwarf. D-O-W-R-F. Come on. (laughs) I was going to say dork. Hi. Dwarf. Thank you. Dwarf. Dwarf. Anyway, uh, so here you go. What are you doing? I go. I look. Big skeletons off in the distance. You ready? I just nod my head. As you see, I have a warhammer, and, and uh, right now I had to probably drop my shield to use a torch. So wait, is it a warhammer two-handed? Warhammer no, can be one-handed as well. Okay. It's a yeah, versatile it's weapon. Versatile, yeah. Yep. Ironically, it is the skeletal mercenaries next. Um, it will come up next to you and attack with its rusty maul. Okay. I'm guessing an 18 hits you. Yes. 
constitution saving throw and nine damage. You do not pass. You contract a disease. Okay. And to be fair to everyone, I'm going to also roll what? No, I I think it's too late, but I had the bardic inspiration. Yeah, it's kind of already too late. Sorry about that. You are supposed to tell me before you um, roll. No, I thought we said it after I roll. We can decide whether to use it or not. But before you say whether it passes or fails. Right. Okay. Well, you can still use it. Okay. Uh, that's uh, to be fair. Okay. A D six. D six. Gotcha. Pass. Yep. You okay. do pass. Nice. So the so the very bad disease that you were going to get, you're not going to. Oof. Uh, as as he hits me, I was like, I, I know you like yeah, me, I, but I, come I, on. I, uh, you feel like. Uh, like something kind of locking you up and you you feel like as if like your whole body is like just quaking but then all of a sudden your white blood cells just attack the disease full on and <laughs> boom you're okay um burn off the disease nice as you see the other skeletal mercenary make its way 20 uh its speed is reduced in that square so yep. the the square is uh to 10 uh 20 it's five things each right say again it's five things each right like uh, it's 10 each right yeah it would be 10 for each square 10 20 25 30 so he can barely get to you okay he's gonna attack you with the rusty mole that's a natural one <laughs> <laughs> roll again 88 do, 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 do. another good one for us let's see here nope it actually goes to a different book because of the other natural 100 um let's see just stacking on here. interesting okay i gotcha well this particular thing has a unique thing so different book entirely um <clears throat> the skeletal mercenary brings forth its mighty maul towards you and you see it coming from a mile away and you see that the that the um uh dead log that you're currently standing on has like a stud on it and it hits it and you just see its whole body jar up as it hits full on just a huge piece of rock um oh. Rukhar's turn is going to cast another Eldritch Blast against this skeletal mercenary. Does a decent amount of damage. Rita? Yes. Uh, hmm. You do see those yep. creatures. I am. Um, and they are charging. Yeah, I, I, I am backing off. A the left. Quick. Bam. I'm doing a quick um, tied action for bonus. Run, run, sir, brave run. Come on, be good. Oof. And it's not. Oof. Uh, you believe yourself to be very well hidden. So I pull out my bow and arrow and shoot this one. Okay. Because I know I'm pretty sure I'm not hidden. It's not an advantage. So here we go. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, let me check. It's armor. Cl- yep, that hits. All right. For five damage. Okay. Uh, your ar- uh, your arrow finds its spot in the Minotaur skeleton's mighty hide, and you just and it still continues to charge forward. It's- you see, both of them are starting to lower their heads. They're charging, and I am my turn. Yep, Harriet will uh, bring her short sword forth. Move over here. She can barely see, but she can see you alongside of her. So she knows you're facing something. So she is going to attack with her short sword with advantage. That is not going to hit that skeleton. <laughs> uh, does she eat the grub? I th- let me double check my notes, actually. She did. Let me check a reroll. That's one down. That's a 20. That'll actually hit. Yep. Fire damage. Decent. All right. So, <laughs> Minotaur's turn. First up. They will attack the nearest people. Charging forward. Raggy. They will use their special ability called charge and will attempt to gore their opponents. <laughs> that one. <laughs> of course it hit me. Well then, as it hits me. DC 14 strength saving throw. All right. But there's also another thing that's going to happen to it because it's going to get shocked. One roll 20. Uh, well, you also need to make a hundred again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
three nat ones in just this round. <laughs> and all from the enemy. Ten it's piercing great. damage against you, Mr. Charles. All right, give me a second. Uh, uh, you said a strength save? Yes. D14. He's good! We're seen. You are not nice. not prone or pushed up to 10 feet away. Also, give me a second, because now I am doing this. This what? Give me a second, I'm trying to put it out. Well, Tony being real tall. That ah. and he's on his phone. It must make me a uh, dexterity saving throw. DC, uh, it's a DC. I don't think spells, but these go through spells. So it's in spells are DC. DC 13. It, yeah, it's going to say your proficiency. Dexterity saving? Yep. Yep. Mm hmm. Or we'll take 2d8 lightning damage. Ooh, it fails. All right. Well, then 2ds. 2d8, not 7. 8. Thank you. Nice. Damn. 15 points of electric damage Ooh. as it hits me. As you as you see arcs of lightning veer off of me when it hits. As I have a smile on my face. With blood coming out of your mouth. Yep. It hurt, <laughs> but I'd give back as much as it hurts me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Silas, your turn. This is not going to be fun. What happened to the other one that missed? Ah, yeah, well, no. that one kind of missed entirely. It was not focusing on its target, the dwarf, and it kind of miscalculated his height and kind of hit the trunk instead. Oh, it just missed. Damn it. Yeah. I think I'm going to try and go fire bolt for now. I think I'm just going to shoot. I think I'm just going to shoot at this one as well for now. Ooh. Okay. Yep, that hits. Give me a. Give me a dab Oh. Uh, two, two fire damage. Oof. So Ooh. close. And now for that 1d100 to take it out. All right. Let's find out. And the wheel. Dun, dun, dun. So as you're battling, you abruptly hear a loud, an abnormally loud voice scream. This with all the racket! Buddy, you don't have to yell that loud. It breaks up your mic. Yeah, I could not. I literally could not yeah. understand what the you just said. Uh, something about what's up with all that racket. Yep. Yeah. I barely got that. Yeah, you. You. you don't. Don't, peaked his mic. don't. Don't shout too loud, man. Like he just makes your mic break up. Uh, Mike Pete. As you as you hear what's with all the racket, you see. <clears throat> allow me to describe this individual. <laughs> You see a beautiful woman with long raven black hair and a violet dress that reaches down to the swamp itself. She doesn't wear any shoes or any footwear of any kind. The most prominent feature about her seems to be that her hair has a mind of its own and is flowing in what looks to be invisible water. And the second most prominent thing about her is her glowing red and yellow eyes. As and she that. does not look happy. <laughs> yeah, as I see that, I'm like, ah, uh, this is not looking good. Can I get from everyone a religion check? Yay, this advantage on me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know squat. Yeah, and I couldn't love it. Natural 20 on Silas, wow. Silas knows things. Yeah, no. Silas knows squat. But what does fuck does Silas know? Uh, waiting for, like... Okay. Waiting like, for Fluffy. I'm getting there, give me a second. Sorry, I had to exit on my character sheet to see shit, what's going on, so... 16. Uh, Sam, Silas, definitely, and Charles. You have definitely heard stories about this woman and how bad it is to piss her off because it's no ordinary person. As I show you, Eris, the goddess of Tiscord. Fuck. Raggy. Whoa, whoa. Oh boy. You see two dark, magical pits of just blackness in her hands as her eye is slightly twitching and you see that her eyes are clearly still trying to wake up. Someone woke her up from a nap. What? Tony, will I have any idea who? <laughs> and skeletons. Uh, so, <laughs> I need everyone to make wisdom saving throws. Oh, 16, thank God. <laughs> Probably not enough. 16, 16, no. 14, 5, oof. Wait, no, it's 12, sorry. 
I don't get this yeah. advantage on saving throws. Yeah, saving throws is later on for exhaustion. I forgot 12. to turn it off. That's that's a lot better. <laughs> Charles, oh god. Oh, oh, he's dead. Uh, yeah. Well, it kind of makes sense with this religion mm. background. Yeah. Who is it again that got the extra bardic inspiration? Not him. Uh, Not him. Oof. It was, uh, it was, um, it was Sam. your character, Sam. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. Uh, no, wait, is that only for attacks, though? Yeah, that's only for attacks. Unless yeah, I will only you. remind you this once. This is considered an attack on your person. Oh, then re-roll it. Go for it. Oh, so I can re-roll it? Yes. It's, uh, it's also saving This is an us. attack on your person. All right. With the vantage. Ah. Then the wheel. It means I got to get back to my character sheet. Just make sure why they don't have a So, you know, you need to... Uh, okay, so they ate uh, a grub from the... Um, to explain, they ate a grub, a rainbow grub, from the natives of this land. And basically, uh, because they were able to digest it without any medical issues, they gained uh, they gained inspirational dice. Okay, for ooh, eighteen. Yes, eighteen. Nice. That's a whole lot better. Yeah. So, I lost a twelve. Then. I was okay. Going to say, so you I needed one. a sixteen to pass. Okay, God. can I re-roll mine then? Uh, it'll be your last one. No, it's me, my first one. Is it really? I thought yeah. you already... No, because I had advantage on the regular one because I... Oh, just no, uh, anyway, yeah, go her. But you, mark off one. I did. I have it down on my character sheet. I believe I'm I marking have. it down myself, so I know as well. Yes, 19. 19, that's a lot better. Only Silas yeah. is taking fullness of this damage. It does make sense. He is the closest. <laughs> I think. No. No. As she just, you see the veins pulsating in her neck as she is unbelievably furious as she shrieks at the top of her lungs. Okay. Uh, um, hmm. Well then. Okay, good enough. That works. Okay. Uh, everyone. Uh, unfortunately, Silas, you are taking the full brunt of this attack. Oh no. Who here? is below 10 HP. Oh, that's me. That's hey. easily just me. That is me. Hey, Sam. <laughs> and party wipe. No, my, my I, I'm is still 10. up. How are you doing, Rita? Rita? If, 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 if I take 10 damage, I'm down to 3 HP? No, actually take a total of 12. Oh, I'm down to 1. Okay. Wait, how much do I take then? Everyone, uh, everyone takes 12 points of damage. Whoever was below 10, you're down. Wait, but I failed, so they all succeeded. Yeah, you failed. So you take 24 points of damage. So I'm dead. No, no, uh, it's it's 5e. You just, you go unconscious. No, okay. no, I do not, because it is double my, my maximum HP. Oh. So I am dead outright. Wow. Yeah, I yeah. forgot about that. That's a... Uh. Well, I thought they fixed that. No. No, no, no. Like in 5e, if you take double your map, your map, your maximum hit points in a single attack, you're down. You are down. dead. Yeah. Yeah. So it bring if it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh crazy. god. Oh, fuck. That's a fucking yikes. Oh, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Again, this this campaign has a high possibility of death. Yeah, but like literally something coming out of nowhere is the one shotting you. <laughs> Well, oh, she uh, did. She did use one of her lower tier things, and I'm sure it doesn't just happen to us. I'm pretty sure it also happens to the enemies. Yeah, they're yeah. all wiped out point blank. In fact, every enemy within a twenty mile radius is currently dead. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> who is currently awake? I am. Um, I'm down. <laughs> I, th I think only like two people. She teleports over. Shoot. To the only person who is currently conscious, you Literally. know, besides yeah, her and basically him and possibly you. She looks at you with very intense eyes. Do you want to explain to me why I heard such noise? Horns blowing. Oh. Will you tell me, child? Rita kind of points mm -hmm. to the undead and then lowers her finger down to the horn. So can you not talk? I can, but almost dying here. 
Fine. Give um, give me a persuasion from roll with advantage. So a normal roll. <laughs> yep. Oh gosh. I want to see how well you do. Please, 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 please. Oh. Okay. Let me look up in my book. Oh, this this counts as the combat thing. It is concerned still combat. So. Okay. I'm using my last one. I have no more. Because Eris is considered a hostile. Mm. Oh come oh, on. I was. Wow. I saw it. I saw it go on the 19 and then the three. Why do I have you to see have her sigh? You see her sigh. Oh, promise me something. Oh. If you ever see that on an island again and you see her point to a nearby rock with a symbol of a bat, know this. I'm sleeping nearby. He gives You're a lucky. shakily thumbs up. You're lucky. I'm covering for someone right now. And I'm not allowed to be the final judge. She snaps her fingers and you see a tiny little soul appear out of nowhere. She grabs it and shoves it into Taklin. Why me? I'm not dead. No, it's Silas. It's Silas is dead. Yeah, I'm, Silas. I'm unconscious. Silas is dead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm unconscious. I'm on death saving throws. I'm not dead. She grabs it and puts it into Silas, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I confused both of your characters because you sound a little bit like I'm sorry. No, totally yeah, different. Accents. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Anyway, this is still I was gonna say. beginning. As Taklin. Silas. Yeah, it's Silas. You're saving oh, Silas. I know. I'm, I'm getting there. Oh, okay. Taklin, okay. Silas, and everyone else who is down. You wake up. Silas, you are stiff. A little bit stiff. Not too stiff, but Rigamorse was starting to get to you. As you just see her standing there, all your enemies are currently dead around you. You're at one HP. Uh, Silas is going to like probably grab a nearby draw and try to struggle to his feet and try to give her a respectful bow. Auckland's going to groan on the ground and ask someone what whose ship that was, <laughs> and then oh. see if anybody has alcohol. She turns around, points at you, Silas. What is your name? I'll just tell you. I feel like you would have already known that. Actually, we don't learn, we don't memorize, we don't read mortals' minds. It kind, it kind of brings out the fun. It ruins the fun. Silas, is it? What are you? A tiefling? Yes. Yes, I am. The king of the nine hells would be very upset with me if I actually killed you off. Ugh. I you just had to be you. on this island, didn't you? Yeah. Well, to be honest, I would be pretty upset if you just killed me off. Uh. Honestly, I can't do that without his per express permission. That's why I brought you back. Unfortunately, I'm still pissed. So that means time to wreak havoc on the seven seas. However, Mr. Silas, in order for me to apologize to you directly, take this. And she produces a necklace with a symbol of a bat on it. And she places it in your hands. This is my first magical artifact of the game. Huh? What? What'd you say? You cut out for me. To identify. I would like to try to identify this. Oh, of course. Uh, this magical artifact gives you, Wait, you a have minor a blessing. What? Oh, I was looking well, at the components. Uh, I think he actually has a magical focus, actually. Yeah, as long as your focus is worth more, more than the component and it, the component isn't used up, it works. Uh, yes. So like you can use a, use a arcane focus for like identify, but you couldn't use it for revivify. This is one of the many artifacts that um, the Navy actually approved of and basically sent out for people for usage. Magical focuses make things a lot easier for magic casters to use and replicate, you know, stuff like that. Uh, sh she has just given you a spell of, uh, well, not a spell, but a necklace, here we go, a necklace of revenge. Okay. The necklace of revenge allows a person, if they have at least one HP or below five HP, if they become low below five HP because of an enemy opponent, the necklace of revenge activates and creates a wall of fire around them. Yeah. And instantly, affects any and all creatures in that 10-foot area. Okay. Sorry? I'll go ahead and find it. 
Um, it's kind of like that. Um, it's kind of like that um, special ability that dark elves have in the video game Skyrim. Like that. Yeah, plain, plain dark elves in Skyrim, but yeah. Ah, basically, it's an ancestral wrath kind of thing. Uh, basically, it sets you ablaze, but it doesn't hurt you. Yeah. It hurts the enemies around you. As well as one additional effect, you can roll a 1d10 and heal for that much, plus your spell casting ability modifier. Okay. So it's both damage as well as healing effect. She also turns to you, Captain Charles Blake. Thank you for saying as I bow to her. And by the way, I'm doing a full, proper, I'm on the ground bowing to her. <clears throat> no? Yes, uh, she she looks at you. Your name is what? Charles Blake. Charles Blake, what does that say? Right, you're under my sister's care. And she emphasizes sister. Aye. You all rest. Me and Blake will be talking alone for a moment. Aye. She starts Lord. walking away from the group. So I follow, because, you know. I am looting. You're yeah. what? I am looking for shiny things. Ooh, give me an investigation. Anyone I, who wants to loot. I checked the one that's next to me. Investigation. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. No! This is what happens. This is what happens when you decide to sleep outside. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be that hot. Uh, me. 23 investigation. <laughs> I trip and fall. Doc! I, I, hold on, hold on. Silas and Tolkien. Come on, give me a second. Oh, shit. You get some good stuff. Oh, shit. I trip and fall, okay? So, uh, Tolkien. Hey, you get a plus two great that you pick up from the Minotaur skeleton. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Silas, you find something even better. So you find that one of the skeletons is carrying something. It was clearly an adventurer in the past, as you can tell from their equipment. You get a bag. I and in the bag, you can hear j- j- You open it? Um, I'm going to wait until after she leaves, then open it. Okay. You can hear weird jangling sounds inside. Yeah, I'm not going to open it yet. I'm going to identify it first, just in case. Of course, of course. Never trust random bags. Bad idea. Bag of devouring. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I've had some horror story games with that shit. <laughs> uh, so you're identifying. Um, there's only one thing out of the ordinary in this entire thing. And it seems that is it enchanted. It's enchanted with something. And it looks from your identification spell. This one particular item is cursed. That's how? Um, it's cursed specifically with your identification on. You can tell that if you handled it or looked at it, you would know that you wouldn't want to ever put it down. It is possessed by a minor demon. Hey. However, the rest of the stuff, you identify it. It's actually like two uncut gem and some coins. Nice. So the bag itself is possessed, but the items inside the bag itself is not enchanted whatsoever. It's okay. just it's just a bag. <laughs> okay, so what's possessed by a demon? Uh, one of the objects inside. Um, uh, so there is a third item inside of the bag that is uh, possessed by a demon. You have not opened it yet, so you don't know which one. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just gonna leave the bag closed for now then. Okay, understood. However, you do know from your identification Whatever it is, is completely spherical. It is round. Um, let's see here. Talking, you also find something a little bit else, which is a bag of about 25 silver coins. <laughs> Sam. Yes. I did not forget about you. Uh, you're looting around. You find a, you find a cumulative worth of Five copper pieces, five yeah. silver pieces, and ten gold pieces. Gotcha. And then, quick question. Uh, yes. Was the horn recoverable from the skeleton that was next to me? Oh, yes, of course. But as soon as the skeleton activated its effect, its effect died away. Ah, gotcha. I'll still keep the horn, though. Of course. That's understandable. Charles. Yep. As she is walking away, you notice that she makes quite the distance from the other group members of the group until she's out of earshot, and then she turns around. 
You are going to do something for me. All right. No ifs, ands, or buts. You are going to do something for me. All right. I want you to kill someone. Uh, whom? May I ask? She sighs a huge sigh. Unfortunately, with the mortal realm, we are not allowed to kill a person, unless they're undead, of course, without the permission of that particular realm's permission. I'm allowed to make them unconscious, but I'm not allowed to kill them. Rules of Ramius. So you got to do it for me. Uh, all right. There has been a mortal who has been a pain in the in a pain in my father's side. You should know him. Well, know of him relatively. He is Inlil, the creator of the sun. Hi. My father worshipped him. Well. Unfortunately, she gets pissed and you can see darkness creeping in around you. Unfortunately, this thing is a higher devil and he's been getting numerous amounts of demons under his realm. Well, his rule, as I should say. I want you to find him and kill him. The nine hells would appreciate it. In fact, he's wanted dead. I... I will take up this task as I can give her a bow. That is an interesting thing. Like, what would you experience while dead? Did you see your grandmother at any point in time or something like that? Out of plain curiosity, Silas. So my pardon? Silas, uh, you said you were a walking while de- well, experience while dead. I'll get to- back to you soon. Um, yeah, so quiet. You said just cut off. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, uh, oh, and Mr. Blake. Hi. The demon you are looking for. Its name, and she mouths it as this word. Hold on. All right, I'm getting ready to type. I was getting ready to type stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, right uh, there. Zakar. Silas. Yes. You are currently writing your experience while dead. What did you experience? Role play it for me. Um, I'm not sure. Like, how, how does the afterlife work in this world? Well, it is controlled by one sole person, which is Hades, the ruler of the dead. He's the sole judge of the dead. So his job is to see whether or not you're supposed to be there or not. Look up your name in the Book of the Dead, judge you for your crimes or lack thereof in some cases, and then give you an afterlife, depending on how you how you lived your life. So let's role play this just for a second. Yeah. While deceased, your character spirit started going down the steps of the underworld. And as you make your way towards the great doors of the underworld, you see none other than Hades, who is standing at the doors. He's not even looking up. He's talking to other spirits. Name, say their name. He flips through the book. Ah, you're a criminal. Go the fuck away. And he and he snaps his fingers and you just see the spirit fly into a great underworld river and it's being swept away in a whirlpool. Yeah, so I was just looking around like, shit, shit, shit. No, too soon, too soon. Name, name, name. And he's continuing to do this. He comes up. Nah. Uh, no, no, too soon, too soon. It's too soon. I still need to. Wait a second. To do. He flips through the book. Hmm. Uh, Silas Tadil. That's your name, right? Yes, yes, it is. What the fuck are you doing here? Well, let's just let, 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 let's just say a goddess log walked, walked, out, walked out of a swamp and screamed me to death. That is not an exaggeration. You see his blue flames on his head abruptly turn red. Ares. <sighs> Well, no. you're not supposed to be here yet. Well, I would certainly agree with you. Here's an idea. Get out of my underworld! And he literally, like, takes his boot and boots you back up to the mortal realm. <laughs> Ow, my back! <laughs> Gets ready with back pain. Yep. Oh. And... and and you, you hear, know, you, you will probably hear him say, and don't come here again anytime soon. Don't plan on it. We do not own any oh. in- images, so. <laughs> yes, disclaimer, we do not. Yeah, I'm just using his character because he's hilarious. You know. And, oh, and because I mean, you also, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was like, you know, for a guy, might in bureaucracy has a mean, a mean boot. <laughs> And uh, okay, so just to let you know, 
because he spent time in the realm of the dead, no matter how brief, you will have a slight connection with none other than Haiti. So just to tell you, as a tiefling, you will have improvements on any and all of your spells that are necromantic in nature or necrotic damage. Wonderful. Anytime you use something like that, you will automatically have a plus instead of whatever dice you roll, you roll one dice higher. So instead of a plus four, instead of one D4, you get a D6. Okay, so like um, a spell like Chill Touch. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it does a D2, D10. Yes, as well as with your dark vision, because you were dead, you no longer see in um, grays. You see in color when when it's close by, but however, if it's distant wise, it's gray. Nice. It's because you were in the realm of the dead. Story. I don't know if that's lucky or not. <laughs> It can be very unlucky and very lucky at the same time. I mean, yeah, so he I'm, has a, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I interrupted you. I know. I was just like, writing de- oh, everything down that happened, including the honestly surprisingly aggressive bedside manner. Yeah. When it comes to their yeah, characters, like, they can be a lot to take in. Yeah. Uh, but probably the main thing he's focusing, he's focusing on in the writing is rather than his time in the underworld is more his what he experienced during the transition process oh yeah (laughs) just uh, okay so to describe to you like for your notebook and everything for flavor and everything yeah the line to the underworld it felt like it truly felt like an eternity was going by waiting for this line to go down like i'm not sure if you've ever seen dragon ball or dragon ball z I, 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 get, I get the idea. Yep. After world, all the, that lined with the puffs of clouds, that's basically how it was. Yeah. It felt like okay. eons before you got down there, but it was only a few minutes up in the real world. I was going back like, oh, how long have I been, long have I been dead? <laughs> uh, as as he, uh, Sam sees you once again, they like, oh, pull him back, thought you're gone for good, as he's kind of holding his side a little bit as well. That's a bit, a bit personal. <laughs> All right. Um, so now that everyone's done their things and combat is considered over, role play <laughs> as you see fit. So I'm assuming Eris just disappears from me. Yep. Oof. My character's over to the side. So I was going to turn to the battlefield and kind of knowing you've read all the bodies, but he's going to start looking at them like individually, like specific body parts, joints, head structure. Anything. Ironically, these are very unique undead. They seem to be cobbled together. Like the magic itself didn't know what to do with the, like how to uh, attach the right body parts to the right person. Oh, like a, there's a nose bone being used, used as a kneecap kind of thing. Exactly. So confused nose bone. <laughs> it's clear whatever like necromantic powers is being taken place, they don't know what they're doing as <sighs> well as they should be. Yeah, so I just sounds like goes, ugh, amateur. Sam summons a produced flame just to get a little bit more light for him as well. But uh, I'm going to lean my back against a rock somewhere that's, you know, not exactly disgusting and try to take a small rest and drink some water. <laughs> I just got my shit rocked. Yeah. Gonna head back to the group. I was like, I hope you're not standing right next to me where you'd be eerie and smelling something. <laughs> uh, I'm, oh, no, I'm, I'm trying to go. I'm trying to... F- a rock that's still near the group, so one over there. Well, there's a lot of rocks actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll post myself up like not near the water, but still up on dry, dryish land. Yeah. So let's drink some water. Stand. Yeah. So it stands up holding the skull, just tosses it to the side. So, well, thank you for the opportun- opportune moment to, to arrive. Yeah, we really appreciate the help you guys gave us. Hi. Uh, so, uh, just, you know, nothing better than a, a good battle to go through uh, to get to know each other. So, just. Anybody have booze? Ah, uh, not at the moment. No. Damn it! Charles, uh, uh, guys. <laughs> come on, uh, Sam. We, we've been traveling for a week together. We know, you know, we don't carry booze. Sam? Yes. Just to let you know, there is a skeleton right by you that has a wine skin. <laughs> uh,. I, I turn it around, I grab it off the ground, and I was like, I mean, you could try this. <laughs> Don't know if it's very sanitary, though. 
Uh, I'll take it and I'll pop the cap and I'll give it a like a, a whiff to see if it's still good and not rancid or anything. It smells like an amazing aged fire whiskey. I take I just take a I take a sip because if it smells that good, I want to enjoy it. You take a sip and you feel like you're back under the mountain with your people working the forge underneath a volcano. This is fire whiskey in its purest form, and it is aged to perfection. I'm just going to sit there and nurse this. Like I'm going to like try to hold off and wean it, but it's <laughs> it's it's being sipped. It's like a, it's like a good fine sipping whiskey where it's exactly. like exactly yeah that's all I'm doing and I'm just I'm giving I'm giving him the biggest thumbs up and I have the biggest shit eating grin like <laughs> this sucker doesn't know what he's missing out on. You seem to be enjoying that. Uh, I you want to share that? <laughs> flip him off. <laughs> oh damn! This is mine. <laughs> he says <laughs> no 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 I'm sipping it I ain't wasting this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I turn around to the to the new folks, and I was like, oh, "By the way, uh, my my name is Sam. Um, nice to meet y'all." Hey, hey, be Char- Captain Charles Blake at your service. Uh, Sam does a kind of little half bow towards uh, Captain Charles. I do the thing where you take your hat off, and I do a polite bow back. <laughs> oh, it's like the hat over your heart with a slight bow. Yes. Okay. I'll okay. assume that the one hiding off at the corner right now is. is- as well. She moves, and then if you can see that bar, you see her flipping off you guys. Oh, uh, can't see. You just bugging her from a corner. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you be okay over there? Uh, I think that is a no. Because of you, I came back with Fireball. <laughs> I have a whole liquor cat in it, my guy. <laughs> Dude, nice. That would be dope. There's some, prop, there's some props to getting out of the military. The that money you saved up is fucking killer. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, it was enough for a house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you see, uh, Sam is like, he kind of looks down at himself, seeing like how he's all dirtied up from being knocked unconscious, uh, and goes down to the little uh, water flow next to it, uh, starts using shape water to clean himself up. Uh, you, you use shape water to clean yourself, and you see that somehow you, you see just abruptly, you see a, a frog who was minding his own business just swimming up the stream. Is caught in your cube and looks at you. That's, I I gently grab the frog from from the cube and I put it back into it the tree. Oh, <laughs> it hops away very quickly. Glad to have escaped its predator in its eyes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I use that water to clean myself up and I, I turn to the rest. It's like uh, there's some water there if you guys want to get a little bit clean. I know it's a lot of muck around here. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, before we uh, continue on forward, and I would like to actually look around a little bit. I am trying to find an herb that could help ease our friend's stomach. Okay, give me a nature check. Ah. All right. I got to say it on whether or not um, you would know it. about this particular region's uh, herbs. See if you can determine whether or not you can. Okay. Give me an investigation roll. Investigation? All yeah. right. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> wow. That's uh in other words, a fucking oof. Oh my god. That's the first time I've ever seen a zero. That that's that's one of the few time. times I've seen a zero. Didn't it happen in session up. one as well? Uh, I remember it. it did. Oh my god. Uh so, um, Charles, you are familiar with some of the herbs that might grow in swampy areas. However, you are not finding any. Eh. I think your biggest concern right now is the fact that you feel abruptly something crawling on your the back of your neck. I swat whatever the fuck it is off. You swat it off, you see a large spider fly off in the distance. Fuck you, spider! You know, this work. And then I head back to the party again. I'm like, eh. By the way, the uh, question before we continue. I need to know, does anyone here have arachnophobia? This character? No, no, no. no. I mean out of character. Is anyone scared of spiders? I hate depends spiders. On how, yes. It depends on how realistic you get with it. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Because, yeah. 
you know, being over in the freaking desert and seeing camel spiders are fucking terrifying. They do yeah. some shit. I gotcha. Ooh. We're just trying to get. I just, I just, well, I just thought I asked because that way I can avoid those kinds of monsters, so I don't trigger anyone. You know. That's why he's so nice to me during combat. He doesn't explain the blood. Well, those there are those parasitic spiders in Redwall. Yes. All right. I wish I had a giant shoe. <laughs> so, so who would like some healing? As I call out back to the group, I raise my hand. <laughs> raise my hand. Yeah, I oh. think we we are in. We require uh, some rest to. I was going. I was going to say it'd probably be best to you know find somewhere to set up camp for the night. And go for a long rest. Definitely. That's good. Comes back slowly. Okay. Uh, so Simple. if you're wanting to Let's find go. shelter, I will need a survival wait, roll. To wait, find isn't the temple shelter. close by? It's going to take you another solid. I thought we saw the stoops. Yep. Yep. You saw it like barely, but the problem is it's another good, what was it? Three hour trudge through the swamp. But oh. with, with the heat, that would be another con- Considering to your body, that's another six hours of, like, exhaustions to your bodies. That's no good to give me exhaustion either way. <laughs> yep, exactly. Which is why uh, whoever is looking for shelter, Yeah, do it. I'll, I'll look for shelter. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. so that's survival, you said? Yep. Um, someone can take advantage or you can each do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to give a roll even though I'm not going to do very well. Oh, hell yeah! Ow. Sorry. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, fuck. Uh, so, Charles, you're kind of upset about not finding, like, those herbs. But you do, like, um, are searching and searching. And you abruptly see something out of the corner of your eye, which you aren't expecting. You see something standing straight in between the trees off in the distance and you're like no it can't be and you walk towards it and you see an old old wreck of an old pirate ship in the middle of the swamp Mm. um there are holes in the hull where you see evidence of a kraken attack and you kind of figure out how it ended up here (laughs) how did it end up here kraken attack ah Probably where the skeletons came from. You do know, however, from judging from its intactness, you could take shelter here and the elements not get to you. All right. And we have the pyro boys. We could just start a fire. Mm, that's true. Mm-hmm. All right. I found us a place where we could possibly camp. It's an old ship. That sounds a lot better than camping out in the open. Hey. <sighs> yeah, doesn't I... it? Rio? <laughs> Little finger to the sky. <laughs> Paris gets angry. (laughs) Anyway, uh, so you find yourself. I'm going to actually, um, uh, as you make yourselves onto the deck of this ship, you realize something about this particular ship, Charles, as you notice that these people were not very nice. As you realize that you are, in fact, on the deck of a slave ship. Oh, shit. Mm. Plan was this again? Huh? Whose plan was this ship again? Does the ship have any markings? Yes, it does. It actually is still flying its pirate flag. What's the marking? Well, Rita, I'm glad you're the one who asked. Uh Uh-huh. You see a symbol of what looks to be a a trident that is standing in the middle of a um in the middle of a mountain with a sun shining over it. Except it's when it's faced upside down, you can see the trident is actually piercing the side of an individual. It's an optical illusion. You would know this as the sigil of the patrons of hope. Okay. All right. Which, uh, Charles, I'm not sure if you, like, I know you were former military. However, um, give me an intelligence roll or an investigation roll, let's see. Well, it's the same either which way. Here we go. Oh, that's actually good enough um you know that for some other reason the patrons of hope which are notorious people for being giving people 
and like they help with like a, like pirate relief and giving out food to the poor. For some odd reason, this is on a ship. Actually, and you're mixing the, up the two groups, that? buddy. Huh? You're mixing up the two groups. Am I? Yep. Am I really? Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yep. Am I? Am I? Yes. DM Fiat. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> I am pretty sure. Well, yes, but actually, no. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> what? <laughs> The group you're thinking of that I'm confusing of are one and the same. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> uh, could I roll history to see what I know about the group? Yes, of course. Uh, I, I'll, I'll I, also I really try dislike history. you bloody right now. <laughs> 19. Oh, well, you know that according to the history books, oh. according to official history written by the World Navy, mind you, Again, a propaganda. They, uh, <laughs> they are the patrons of hope. They are drug smugglers uh, 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 in secret, which you actually know. Uh, basically, they they put a mask on being like war relief, being giving and all that good stuff. When in reality, they smuggle drugs and their slavers on top of it. Oh. Charles just goes. Hey, help me move the bodies. There are no bodies. They oh, have been long gone because of that Kraken. They have been eaten. There are no bodies in this. It is completely empty. All that's left are untouched, unopened barrels and um, like all sorts of things. I'm looking for some rum. <laughs> you won't find any. Yes. No, 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 Anything on this ship you don't want, trust. Okay, give me an investigation roll. I knew this was all for rum. I would have put more levels into it. <laughs> I don't find anything. I got a seven. 19 again. Wow. Damn. Uh, so, Silas, the first, second, and third barrel that you open looks to be a uh, hard tack. If you are familiar with the term, like a crack of life. Yep. Very dry, very unsavory thing. It was meant for rations for the slaves and everything. Next barrel you open up. As soon as you open up the, you open it up and you see a beautiful, beautiful sight in your opinion. Very beautiful. What is it? Well, it was the money that they were paid for the slaves. Hmm. How much in the, in the 10,000 gold coins? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, that's good. Hmm. Well, 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 my fellow adventurers, I think I'm going to need some help moving all this. <laughs> <laughs> Next I... one you open up, you don't even have to open it. You just move it and you just hear sloshing. Oh, so probably more. And you up. just see, you just, see, you just roll it over and it has three letters on it. Rum. Rum. <laughs> <laughs> Charles now hugs that barrel. <laughs> is the do I notice him finding the rum? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going up to the rum and I'm going to see if the rum is still good because alcohol uh, does it, go bad. It, it is the it is um been tacked. However, um you like you put a little like dab on your finger, taste it. It is th the seawater has ruined this ale oh. and rum. It is bad. Mm. I wouldn't uh, drink that, lad. It's I'll try, to see, I'll try to see if I can purify it with my shape water. Ooh. I have purified food and drink. water. I actually have precision detection, which can clean things. I, I actually have purified food and drink. Actually, yeah, that would work perfectly, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Charles, as you, like, touch the barrel in order to make it better again, all you see as you cast the spell, all you see is all the salt just start pouring out of the uh, like out of the seeps of the barrel and move out and like you take another like dab of it put it on your tongue and this is a unique beverage i personally homebrewed for this campaign i call it what is that for since everybody else was looking around okay i call it the cliffhanger Oh, you butt. Oh, no, I'm not ending it. Oh. <laughs> but uh, the drink is called Cliffhanger. 
That would have been a good cliffhanger, though. Yes, yeah, it that's, would. That's, yeah. You missed an opportunity. I'm just saying it. The cliffhanger was made by by the first person to ever reach the highest peak of the highest mountain. He created it after coming down with some ingredients. The ingredients are extremely, extremely delicious. And on top of it, because it comes from on top of the mountain, the, it is always chilled. It's, it's always it's, cold, no matter is there, how long it sits. Is there any other like wine flask or water flask around this place that I can fill them with? Because it's a barrel, so it's heavy. Uh, you you see that there are there is a storage unit around the side of just around here. Can you see? Uh, no, no, it's all black for us. I was about to ask. Can we put ah, our tokens down? Yeah, too? yeah, absolutely. I so, can't see what to put down. Uh, nope. Ah, I can't see. Okay, still black. I saved it. I saved it, and it didn't work. I saved it. Didn't work. What do I do? I save it. Does it work? No. Ah, bollocks. Uh, anyway, uh, to explain to you, um, basically, it is nice and chill, and it is a very fine rum. It is the type of stuff that is only accessible to people that are, like, at least admiral in the World Navy. This stuff can be expensive. Charles is a happy, happy guy. He's a happy, happy, happy guy. It is smooth going down. It is very gentle going down the throat, but it's very oh, hey, flavorful. Now we can see. Yep. Perfect. I'm um, taking care of it right now. Yeah. Uh, Sam freezes a cup, right? Uh, some water in the shape of a cup and dip, dips it in and grabs a, a cup for himself. I'm, I'm going to start looking to see if I can find anything, like I said, about the... Uh, Water flask or wine flask. I am not water skin. I wouldn't go that far. I'm just saying that. <laughs> I have purified f- food and drink, dude. I have one more casting, and that's I a mean, lot of water that I can purify. Whoa. That's fair. Fair. Hey, who else cannot see right now? Who did I not give it to? Well, I, I have a torch. So. <laughs> yep, I'm taking care of that. Uh, now, I can't actually. see either. Yeah, yeah. Give me a moment. Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, it didn't save the changes because it's in. Uh, did you go to when you when you yep, saved? I saved it, it to, to the edit? token. I saved it to the token. Yep. Uh, did you do it before or after the changes? After. Why? Okay. No, that should that should have saved it. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, my my roll twenty can be weird sometimes. It's uh, to be if uh, you could go to the other uh get the other map uh highlight everyone. And then right, right click, copy them and paste them. Right, right. Okay. Uh, give me that would help. Okay. Can everyone see now? I'm stuck in one room. Yeah, I can't move. Oh, there I go. Yeah, this map is very weird. Oh, I can. Yeah, no, I'm just now. Uh, okay. you do open up the uh, the room that I told you about, which is yeah. right over here. Yep. Uh, you see a bed. Um, there you go. Thank you. And a chest. I, I'm gonna. The. Uh, so, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, no worries. The chest itself uh, is uh, slightly open, and as you open it, you see an empty wine cask and what looks to be clothes and um, a note. It seems. Uh, what's uh, the note written in? Well, it is closed with a wax seal and what looks to be a family crest. Uh, side of this, side of this note with a crest on it. You- Know anything about it? Oh, let me have a look. See if I can. Oh, anyway, just give it. Just hand it over to me. Let's see what this. Let, let's see what this is. Yeah, I'd, I'd hand it over and I'd uh, check the uh, cask that you're talking about. And it's empty. It's empty. Okay, cool. I'd bring that back then. Yep. Uh, what? So yeah, what do I roll to identify this letter? History. Uh, to identify not only what this is, but also to try to identify the wax seal itself. Twenty. Ooh, that's really good. Let me get my information. Let's see here. 20, 20, 20, 20. Here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> this wax seal belongs to the to the Vice Admiral family known as the Raval. I know it sounds bizarre, oh. but I got a randomizer for some of these names, so don't judge me. <laughs> don't judge. <laughs> judge. Yep. <laughs> oh, Vice God, Admiral yeah. family for the Traval, and as you read it, it is in fact in 
the language of the High Elves. So it is in Elvish. Do you know Elvish? Hello? Hello. Oh, hello, Paul. Uh, yeah, hello. hi. Do you, so know, do you know Elvish? Uh, let me check my languages. Uh, yes. Wow. He looks smart. You, he dresses fancy. You'd think he was. I saw that, by the way. Yeah, I kind of realized I forgot to add additional my additional language from my background. Yeah. Make sure you have that stuff ready. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had. Uh, like, looking, Okay, let's have a look at languages. I am missing languages. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll take care of that later. But anyway, yeah. here's what here's what it says. <laughs> Thank you for bringing by these to my attention. Now that I have paid you for your wares, I demand the use of these slaves along with the magical artifacts that I paid for. I want to become an admiral within the month, and I demand my my packages by the end of this week. When did I t tell how long ago this was written? It is actually dated. Okay. It was dated five years ago. Hmm. Well, a bit later to do a thing about that. Yeah, so it does update everyone as to what this letter is about. Mm, so there's a possibility there still what? might be stuff hidden here as uh, oh, Sam is going to cast Detect Magic. How much does the Detect? Okay, thank you for range. Uh, 30 what feet of you. I'm going to actually measure this out. So uh, you're yeah, doing so it, Sam? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, he's casting it, and then for the duration, he's kind of like walking around, checking like the different, right. going to the different rooms. Up and to 10 minutes. Okay. Yes. Um, let's see here. Let me and, and I'm virtual casting it. So. Right, of course. It's the best way to do it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Did you ever figure out what the demon is in the bag? Oh, yeah, do I also feel that? <laughs> yeah, you do feel that now. Um, um, did you I, ever open it? Oh, it says the bag. He never actually opened it yet because yep. demon in a bag didn't really don't want to open that yet. Yeah, yeah I, I steer clear of a uh, uh, side. Uh, you feel you don't even have to walk. You instantly feel an intense magical aura coming from deep within the bowels of this ship. Go down that way. It, it, like the, the yes, it is. It is coming from this area. Gotcha. I I turned to to the rest of the group. I was like, uh, so uh, out this the room now. There's something big uh, going down that way. Just wow. so you know, the aura is incredibly dark and evil, and it is not pleasant. Gotcha. I I'm like, yeah, it's not it's not a good. Doesn't feel good. It feels very very. Nasty. Um, it's the best way I can explain it. Um, Quick suggestion. How about what? not going against something dark or whatever dangerous? Or all about to die? Yes. I, so, uh, let I, sleeping dog lie. Charles says as he comes up. You see him with, with his water skin full now. He's drinking out of it. Also, did you read that letter out loud? Oh, yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> can I come out of the room now? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah, now I'm going to take my mini cask and I'm going to go fill it with alcohol. <laughs> I have priorities. <laughs> Don't forget to add the weight. I wasn't. I wasn't. I was. I was like, why is he still in the room? I was like, oh, yeah, we maybe can't. because this. Uh, for some reason, this game, uh, this uh, this map doesn't allow you to pass through rooms for yeah, some reason. Yeah, you can. You can actually set that in the um uh top, in the map. In the map options. Yeah, I'm going to really have to figure that out. Fuck uh, yeah, like, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Uh, by the way, as 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 um you are filling up your your alcohol, Mister Talkin, you notice how you're continuing to pour into it, and the wine skin is not filling up. Why? Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna wave at the person who I just heard about looking for magic, and I'm start waving. I'm gonna go. Is this wine flask of? Is it magical? It, is it? I, I, I turn around. Am, am I detecting it? It is very magical. Yes. Yep, <laughs> you have a cup of endless wine, man. <laughs> no, better. It is. It is. It is known as the wine flask of distortion. So basically, you can fill. You can 
fit three entire barrels of rum inside of this wine flask alone before it fills. <laughs> I am okay. I need to put this down. There has to be a limit. You, scare, you bastard. <laughs> Wine glass yes. of holding eye. <laughs> it's a ridiculous item, but hey. Yeah. It works. Uh, uh, especially with rations and water bastard. and everything. It's full of booze. It's yeah. full of booze. <laughs> There's no ifs, ins, or buts. It, yeah, oh, so unfortunately, the magic is very precise. It only works on alcohol. Didn't somebody say they have the shape water spell? Yes. So Ooh, I, I, you I, work I, well I, together and I can purify that water and we can just dip our water in. So it's the wine flask of distortion? Yes, distortion. Thank you. It can only distort the wine. Like any <laughs> other liquid, it would fill up like normal. So it's alcoholic. Got it. Yes. <laughs> you can see you can see the name on it is dwarvish in nature. Well, I can read it, so Yep, it it's it, 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 it's a dwarfish name and it's it, it says it it brings a tear to your eye as you see a familiar Last name of Iron Fist. It was clearly stolen by some of these slavers because oh. you see a stain of blood on it. Well, now I have even more of a reason. <laughs> hey, also, again, you better share that. <laughs> well, I, I nod my I, I, I nod my head and I I tip a little bit more into his just drank flask so that way he has a little bit more. I do recommend we hurry up, though, because we are not in good shape, and there's something really, really bad that's in the ship. So I say we do not rest here anymore. I you say you say something bad. bad. What kind well, of aura? With the detection, you do know it's sedentary. It's not moving. I mean, we just rotate guards, then. That's what I would do. Hmm. You just keep like, watching. So, yeah, we rotate so a like guard. I, yes, yeah, I feel like so I do it, to ask, what kind of aura did you sense from it exactly? But try to be as precise as possible. Yes, I, I understand. It's it's some sort of malicious, some evil type aura that I sense. Mm. Uh, do, do I get the specific type of uh, magic uh, DM? The specific school of magic? Uh, necrotic. Necrotic, okay. Yeah, I, I, I turn to Silas. It's like, yes, yeah, so I send this, this evil necrotic aura to to whatever is down 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 that away. Uh, look, into it, but, look into it after after having a nice rest. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not really Oh no and, fighting. And but. Sam is looking very fucked up. And as he as as you say that, he actually looks down at himself as like, oh and then you see his hand um turn into flames and then he puts it towards his chest and he's gonna cast cure wounds on himself. And that would be my last spell. Well then what did I find with my roll? Um, That's a based, great question. I'm looking for information more. Um, you are you're finding actually quite a bit of information. Apparently, um, you find the logbook of this particular ship and its routes. Um, you see that at one point in time, uh, they in they in they invaded in secret uh, Montressor Seaport. They captured quite the number of dwarves, not without a fight, mind you. They basically claimed that quite a number of their own men perished at this fight, but they did manage to capture a few dwarfish slaves. Um, they also, um, while there, they also captured um, someone with the last name Blake. Okay. And um, also, it appears that the logbooks c continue and writes like their daily round, you know, nothing very special, you know, about the payment up front by this mysterious individual who was cloaked and bought all of their slaves all at once. Um, and as well as a, a very short journal entry saying apparently um apparently poseidon was furious one day and decided to set the ship upon a a mighty storm and a something was following them and when it says them it sort of drifted off with just the pen being dragged across the thing okay in my history would I remember said ship? You would. Um, this particular ship was a scourge like, well, five years ago. Yep. It was notorious for being 
for being a part of the kidnapping and everything. But the problem was no one could actually prove it because it seemed like a reputable thing on the up and up. Like every time the World Navy would come by, they would be representable. And they would be like, you know, like we're justice, we're kindness, all that good stuff. So they never got caught. Um, and apparently it's just they, they finally got their just just desserts just in a different way that you were expecting. Apparently they had a sister ship just like this one, but very much bigger and apparently much more slaves on board. In fact, the the slaves on board that other one, this ship, uh, you would know its name to be the um, uh, the Ascension, and this is known as, uh, and its sister is known as the Beacon of Hope. So does my character know about the two people actually being one, or just, she still doesn't know? I would say your character wouldn't realize that they are one and the same. Okay, you just, okay, now I'm going to pocket this book. I'm sorry to say, I know like I told you, but your character does not know yeah, this. That's yet. why I asked. That's why I asked. Yep. She's just going to pocket it. Yep. Safe keeping and all that. Uh huh. So you're, uh, sorry. Under treasure. Log. Uh, what's the name of the ship? Okay, again? so this ship right now is known as the Sanction. Do you need help spelling that? Yes, you know me. Does anyone else have skill in uh, in spelling? Sanction? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep, sanction. Like S-A-N-C-T-I-O-N, isn't it? I'm oh, so proud. I can't, I can't spell word shit. My God. I mean, I'm okay. sorry. I'm very bad at spelling. Oh, okay. well, I can't spell. When it comes to sanction, There's a it's S-A-N-C-T-I-O. What the fuck? I didn't Someone's ask you to speak. What? Google decided to launch. Oh. Uh, the S-A-N-C-T-I-O. T I O N. So he got it right. Yeah. Okay. Surprise. I, the I just had to spell it in my own brain, you know? I joined the military and I was in the infantry. Spelling is not some math and, and spelling. Yeah. Nah. I, I just literally had to like really go. Uh, it, yep. Sanction. That's how you spell it. Uh, or I can't now, but I can put an M because of my yep. dyslexia. Yep. yep. And it's oh. right next to the M. So it, uh, N. So it doesn't really help. Spother. Yeah. And the other is Beacon of Hope. What? Oh, I just thought, I remember. I just had a thought. Did we actually ask each other why we were, we were here? <laughs> no, nope. no, no, you did not. Not, not yet. I, I was going to like like oh, while well, everyone's like sitting down and resting and stuff. So goes. By the way, why are you all you all here? I mean, very very very. Uh, what's the word? Convenient for us. But why were you why were you there in the first place? Well, we were here to find some scouts that went missing a while back. We were hired, Scouts and also we're here to kill a necromancer. Oh, yeah. oh. We have, we have a similar go have, a, have the same goal then. We also they're going to go kill a, kill kill a, kill a necromancer. We were hired by Captain Flint. Hey, we were not. Our first mission was to find the scouts. Is basically what our mission originally was. Yeah, just to let you guys know, uh, you were hired by the actual World Navy to retrieve this item, gotcha. which I will not mention for the sake of other people who are currently listening in. Yeah, I'm silently screaming on the inside. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, like uh, Silas mentioned, it seems like our goals are pretty, pretty aligned. Um, at least for me, I say safety in numbers. Um, you know, the crazy, co crazy occurrences can happen at any time, as I do not mention the name of what just happened. You mean almost dying? Yes, that. She kind of gives I, uh, a creepy smile as she looks at you three. Are you looking at us like that? Nah, she'd be like that. Okay, but why? I, don't I know. point at him when he says that, like, hey, his question is the right question. Which question? Why are you creepily looking at us like that? Why do you always drink? Because I'm a dwarf, it's a racial thing. Give us I'm a human, I drink. That's just me. You're a pirate, I, though, it makes sense. <laughs> I also top off your wine flask a little bit more. I top yeah, off your wine flask. the self-proof, I think. By the way, um, Rita, you're still kind of looking through the barrels, and you find... You don't know how the slavers managed it, uh, but they somehow killed a very difficult fish that is, well, notorious for being difficult to kill. The f it's a dead frugal fish, and the smell hits you. 
instantly. Oh, she puts the cap back on. That is one thing I'm not going to Even while alive, these these creatures are notorious for being stinky. Go roll that outside. That's understandable. <coughs> so, um, I guess we should uh, set up to, to rest and recover. Um, I personally don't need that much time to, to recover, so I can take a couple of watches and... Um, yeah. Also, we need a fire. I, I need to dry off some more. Well, there are quite the number of bar- boxes, so... Yeah, but we're also inside of a ship, so think yeah, about that. So, so, oh, um, you said there's, there's barrels of hardtack, or barrels of hardtack, right? Yep. It's still and good. also, oh, it's good. Um, as a disclaimer, this is a uh, this is a slaver ship. So the deck of the ship is made of, of metal, not wood. Oh, okay. So I'm going to take some of the like empty boxes that I find and start making like kindling and uh, you know that's why I chose this particular map is because it's I was open. going to say the nice. doors are in walls are probably scratch by fingernails and whatnot yeah a lot of them do they have a okay do they have what well there is a kitchen well you would assume there is a kitchens but um, Wait, I think I have a pot hang on let me check you have pot, dude. Share. <laughs> Not that type of pot. <laughs> Maybe please click select my character and check out my items. Why do I, I also my- picture like the dwarf also smoking a, like a large amount of pot? No, just booze. Strictly okay. booze. Strictly booze yeah, and Charles, tobacco. Charles would probably smoke. Mm, yeah. Probably so. I mean, and it'd be I like it'd a- be like it'd be like a pipe. It'd be from a pipe, obviously. Yep. I have a mess kit functions as a pot. Uh, cooking pot. I do have an iron pot. And now it is a helmet as soon as you turn it upside down. <laughs> well, I'm just, I was just checking. I was making sure that I had a pot. I was like, wait, I swear right. I have them. I do. Well, a mess and kit it does include a large pot, so. Well, I got an actual 10-pound pot. <laughs> so I can actually make a big stew. And actually, that's what hardtack's good for, is a stew. Yeah. Sure, we can, we can we have make a practice. stew. Um, but your character know this, though. Probably, actually. Bro, Living the life on a ship, man. <laughs> I think the only person that would know how to really use our tap would be my first truth. Uh, ugh. I mean, you're, oh, you're de- time. <laughs> Shit. Uh, that's true. He was a pirate for a time. All right. Uh, you set up the fire. You set up uh, the food and everything. You have relatively nice meal as Rita is continuing to go through the things. Shiv, you find nothing of interest. That's, that's question. fine. Yes. What is you, your question? You, you were talking about how screwed up the ship was. How bad was it again? Okay, so the hull of the ship underneath mm-hmm. has a lot of holes in it, like circular holes where the tentacles of the of the kraken are painfully obvious, like where nature has gotten in or Isn't stuff like that. that. You can see huge bite marks taking out of the ship as well. So there's no chance in it being repairable. I'm asking. Not likely. This this ship has this ship is done for. Uh, the reason why is because I mean the inside of the ship still, from what I can kind of understand, still looks like in pretty decent condition. So this is not the amazing surface. Like downstairs, hopefully. Yeah. So I was just trying to figure it out because yep. my background shipwright. Maybe I can fix it. Wait, if we sleep here, are we going to get exhaustion, or do we have to go under? We're sleeping under. Yeah, he said. He said okay. we're protected from the elements. Okay. Just yeah, yeah you currently, you're only, uh, currently you're only on like the deck to like search for supplies and then you guys go down one level and you guys can see a lot of bunks and everything where you can sleep and like take watches and all that you see one additional flight but as soon as like you see that flight oh my gosh sam you can just you you can feel you can feel that malicious intent yeah and as, as we get close to it i just turn to the group it's like yeah that we should not go further until we'll, we we are well rested because it is coming strong from down that direction don't worry uh, we'll, I'll, we'll look into it, we'll look into it after. yeah yes okay so who is taking first watch Whoever doesn't need as much sleep, you're probably the best one for it. Yeah, um, so I, I, I was going to say first. the one who doesn't have dark vision. That too. Yeah, true. So Charles is so, the one to take first watch. Okay, well, I'll need you to make a perception check, please. So, so I'll take first and second watch. Okay. 
you take first subject, right. please. Yep. So uh, are me are we both doing it or you want to do just first and second? He's doing first and second. You'll take the last one when it's just about be daybreak. Okay, sounds uh, good. Uh, I was thinking both of us, but Oh, okay, that works too. Yeah, yeah that's whatever. So roll would get. Yep. Section. Uh, so far, uh, nothing really happens. Just, just sitting there. Nothing's happening. You hear a lot of like nature sounds, but that's about it. Charles, you're sitting there. Nothing's going on. Good. <laughs> okay, and next that's one. <laughs> next perception check. That'll be the whoever's on third watch. Natural twenty. Holy shit. Oh, Charles, is, Charles is asleep by this point. Yeah, my character's dead. Dead to the world. <laughs> you just see drool. Just... Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm at this point. Once Charles goes to bed, I'm I'm taking over the second watch by by myself and just keeping watch over everything. Why do I just picture also the dwarf just is cuddling up to like his new wine flask, <laughs> like it's a hey, teddy bear? Hey, you might be right, but it's still racial profiling. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sam. I don't know. I, I imagined him knocking over the barrel and crawling into it just so he can get the smell as well. The residual smell. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're using the barrel burn. That way the whole room smells like it. Uh, oh, true. gosh. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So as you're taking a watch, Sam. Yes. Uh, you notice that uh, whatever this feeling is, it's not moving. Mm-hmm. And um, you abruptly feel a huge bout of just in this hot climate. It is a huge bout of cold, ice cold air. Mm-hmm. As you're taking your watch, you notice just out of the corner of your eye, you notice something move. You focus on it and you notice trudging through the woods is a... Uh, um, not sure if your character would be familiar with the creature, but uh, could I get a nature check just to double check or a history yes. check, one of the two? Whichever you feel better about. Nature yeah. check. Uh, y- you are... With this creature, you you know it's, it's a phantom, but you don't remember the name. Okay. You know that it's not always good when it's nearby, nor is it always bad bad or so you just don't remember what exactly the creature is gotcha. you just hope it doesn't come nearer yeah so i'm basically just uh raise my caution level right i'm like put, putting on my shield you, right just keeping my my hand at the ready for for the produced flame but yeah. not actually casting it you you see like it like moving through the woods in a very bizarre fashion like it's gripping the sides of like the the trees and it's like crawling through them like a spider and it's completely silent and you see it notice something and then abruptly you just see it like turn into almost like a flying ball of shadow and (laughs) moves within a blink of an eye and you just hear an abrupt squeal of terror as you see a very dead uh, looking um, uh, goblin who uh, ironically was part of the party that you were on and it ran away on its forearm. So uh, as that happens, uh, Sam is still just uh, he kind of goes and uh, who, who will it as be? it Let just me... like wanders off as it starts eating its now prey. Your disgusting crunching noises, by the way. But go ahead, sorry. Gotcha. No, so as uh, as he sees the creature not really doing anything more than enjoy its prey, um, like I said, he's still being very cautious and um, like at a moment's ready to wake everyone up at a moment's notice, basically. Of course. However, uh, your watch goes on by without a hitch. Morning comes. Um, And because of this and because of how well rested and the area you slept in was relatively nice. Rita, remove that exhaustion. Yes, finally. This is a breathtaking page.